The year I left um, the mega church, also my dad died, mm-hmm. and um, it was the same year. Same year. It actually, I, I I was in therapy for about a year prior to that, beginning to wrestle with some of these questions. What drove the therapy? Like, what was uh, what were you <sighs> trying? To, if you go to therapy to heal, <laughs> I I said. I was saying something like this. Is there such thing as a natural Kent? That was kind of what drove me into therapy. I I think that's the same thing as saying something like, what, is there a true self? What is, Mm -hmm. I was beginning to see that the masks that I had been wearing didn't fit well anymore. And for a long time in therapy, I was kind of working through um, my relationship with, the church or, or my dad or, mm-hmm. or work related things. And until I started realizing I'm, I'm trying to, uh, discern, is it time for, I guess, is it time for me to pull the plug? Although I wasn't exactly talking about that in therapy. That was sort of the underlying subtext. Mm-hmm. And I just needed some help. I needed us, yeah. I needed a safe enough place, but my therapist was interesting because I, I think I put this in one line of my book. If not, I probably said it before. Um, I, I was, I said, I'm afraid I'm going to fuck my life up, mm-hmm. you know, and that it's, it's going to completely fall apart. And he said, yeah, I'm here to make sure that that happens. <laughs> what? Yeah. Which yeah. was what I needed to hear. I yeah. mean, maybe there was a flash of insight cause that's exactly, I was like, okay, then I'm, I'm in the right enough place for right now yeah. because he wasn't trying to piece my life back together. Hey, don't worry. Let me give you, give you some skills for negotiating your work environment. You yeah, know? right. No, let's go deeper. Yeah. And um, but when I when I decided that I was done, this was several years in the making, if if I'm really honest about it. And but I decided kind of, it felt like, on a whim, all of a sudden in the kitchen, I I said to my wife, I'm done. She's like, okay. And then I went and told the leadership, and and I thought we could have a strategic slow exit, and they kind of freaked out a little bit and said, "Go now, like you you have to be done as quickly as possible." <laughs> I was like, "Oh," and and, so and that happened in November. Yeah, off, yeah exactly. Rip the bandaid off. That happened in November, and my dad died in December. So all this stuff, and I was in the middle of this um, year long program. Same person I mentioned before, Bill Plotkin. Uh, Animus Valley Institute had these, had this year-long immersion where you would go to these four different locations and a lot of psycho-spiritual work and, um, in a small group setting, and that's intense. And yeah. all this stuff was happening at the same time, and I didn't know where my paychecks were going to come from. Right. So maybe something of the soul, that's my, my hope, maybe something of the soul was luring me into this dangerous ground. And it felt lonely, like Mm -hmm. really, really lonely. My phone really did, stopped ringing. And And what does that say about just human nature? It's like that at that point, pastor uh, congregation is a relationship. It is a divorce. There's collateral damage, you know, like maybe not intentionally like that, but there's perceptions of betrayal or these things that other people feel that aren't weren't privy to your journey to that point and and I think are some ways you know maybe aren't all that interested in even understanding it you know mm-hmm. but I think that sort of one two three so uh, as you what was that next six months like when you were you leave Mars your dad dies you're also in therapy about who is the real Kent <laughs> sounds ridiculous but no yeah. <laughs> I bet I get it but that that's the essence of everything right like uh, yeah. that's the all these outward explorations to me feel like it all feeds back to being more secure in in our own skin and who we are as mm. we get more more knowledgeable or more seasoned to go okay there are some things I understand and there's some things I don't understand. and But I can't imagine what it, that was like to go get to a point where you're like, I'm done. 
I'm sure you had a complicated relationship with your dad over time. Mm -hmm. And then your pastor's kid who became a pastor, mm -hmm. that has its own sort of like probably, uh, yeah. uh, you know, am I just doing this? Is it the family biz or? Yeah, it's what I knew. It's yeah. what I knew. And there's some truth to that. And there's even some truth, and I hate to admit it, that I was doing it to please my dad mm -hmm. and my, my family of origin. And that's really painful for me to admit. It's actually more embarrassing. It, it, but there's some truth to that. I remember when I, I, just, I decided to leave and I told my parents, both of them, and this is before my dad died, and my dad didn't have a response. Of course, he could barely talk. Um, as you know, he died of ALS, so he, mm -hmm. he, he could barely talk. And that was um, sad to not have a kind of engagement. But my, my mom in particular wanted something more out of it. Mm -hmm. She wanted my dad to respond in some way. And I, something came over me, and it was a feeling of, I don't need that. Right. And, and I ended up, this is one of the last conversations I had with my dad. I said, mm -hmm. yes, I'm leaving. And I told him the truth. I said, I, I, I actually told him what I told the congregation, that I feel called, in a sense, called to the unknown, to the edges, to mm -hmm. be, I, I have to, I don't know what's next, but if I don't go, I'll never find out. And that's kind of what I said to my dad. And I said, I don't need a response. I don't need, I just let him off the hook. And he kind of nodded and we had this passing moment that felt connecting without any words. And maybe in a way, um, he understood more than most people what sure. was going on. Uh, at least that's, well, I he hope had some that. unconventional journeys he after, did. He, you know, I mean, did. just being diagnosed, but then living, I, I photographed one of his book covers, The Year of Living Like Christ, or I forget mm -hmm. the actual title of it. But yeah, Like Jesus. Or right. Living Like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's an unconventional way to live. Yeah, you know? he had this kind of slightly rebellious, unconventional, mm -hmm. actually, if you go back to social acceptance or authenticity, he was yeah. trying to find his own way. And maybe in many respects, um, my wife actually said this one time, that people criticize, have criticized me, even in my own family, for sort of betraying the family business and not carrying the torch on. And she said, actually, in many respects, you've, that's exactly what you've done. Con continued yeah. to follow the questions where they yeah. might lead and willing to take some risks. And I did, in part, learn that from my dad. When he did die, though, it was strange because it was, it was sad but it was also freeing in a way. And, um, and, and he had a terrible disease, so yeah. there was a sense a lot of, of relief. Suffering. Yeah, there was a lot of suffering. And I think, you know, I don't know if there's a world record for living with ALS, but he seemed to live uh, as a blessing and also... As a, a curse in the curse, end, that's curse. right. To, uh, you know, I, I don't know how long he lived, eight or nine years probably. Or Longer, long. 15. He had it 15 years. I mean, that's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. The last five were really hard. Yeah. And, but, and when I say sense of freedom, I, I mean it even existentially. Yeah. Like, um, okay, uh, this chapter of my life is over. Mm -hmm. And, and there is a sense that um, that death is not a problem. That was, that was the, a kind of um, felt experience, that this is not a problem. And I didn't believe my dad was up in heaven running around and like playing soccer with his yeah. Northern Ireland buddies. It, it, was, it was more of an experience. And I... I and not one that was theoretical that I read in a book. Death is right. not a problem. It was a, it was a felt experience. And in some ways, that, along with a few others, changed my life, you know, and, and in the middle of all this. That's a kind of ground. That's a religious experience. Yeah. And, um, and so to have, I guess, religious experiences in the midst of, like, public perception, this guy has left the reservation or whatever, sure. helped me continue to put one foot in front of the other, I guess. Yeah.